Yay! Wow. Coming out with pep. Oh, or <laughs> <mental illness>. <laughs> it came out crazy. <laughs> it took a turn. Yeah. It's Alex and Jim. We analyze Billy Joel lyrics. That's what we do. Break them down. Now, how many times have we done that, would you guess? I'm going to say this is episode 92. 93. 93. Yep, last one was 92. Wow. Yep. We're almost ready for the big 100th gala. Yep, no, and my friend has an idea for it, which I'll tell you later, but... <laughs> <laughs> is it good and stupid? It's pretty funny and dumb, and, and it would be easy, so it has that advantage. That's a huge plus. Yeah, nothing extra has to happen, really, other than he's involved, which should be fine. He's a good dude. <laughs> all, right. Um, all right, I had this question I wanted to ask you. So you like country music, right? Yeah, I like a lot of it. Yeah, mostly older stuff, right? Mostly the older stuff, or, or even like the 90s. Mm -hmm. Which is older stuff, that's older, older stuff. stuff now. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I really only don't like the bro country anything with like voice modulation seems silly yeah um yeah the real genre country is great you want to hear a slide guitar now and then yeah 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 so um every now and then i get in a in a particular kind of melancholy mood um where i'm not actually sad but i want to indulge in sadness in a joyful way is I just enjoy sadness a lot of times. Yeah, I get that. And I was trying to remember an old country ditty. And luckily my wife said something unpleasant. She was joking kind of, but it yeah. reminded me of the song. But ah. before I tell you what it is, do you have a favorite old time country song? And when I say old, let's say 60s or 70s. Yes. Um, it is called He Stopped Loving Her Today. Oh. George Jones. George Jones. A real saddie, but also a real, <laughs> real corny, sad, sad song that's fun to sing along with also. Yeah. And a long uh, talky part. Yeah. I do love the, the old songs had a long talky part. Yeah. Um, before I tell you mine, I I, be, I listen to the one I like, and then my uh, listening device will generate a playlist. And the second song was Big John. <laughs> <laughs> Great. What a also song. sad in his huh? way. Yeah. Also sad. At the bottom of this pit is a big, big man. <laughs> <laughs> If uh, anybody listening to this has never bothered to listen to the subgenre of songs about tough guys who turn out to be nice, it's such a funny subgenre of country. Yeah, there's a lot of great. I like any supernatural trucking song. Oh, God, yeah. There's some great, like, that rig hasn't been on this highway in 10 years. You know, a lot <laughs> yeah. Of uh, Ghost Riders in the Sky, classic. Classic. So here's the song, and I listened to it, and I was like, yep, exactly what I needed to hear. Uh, Willie Nelson composition, uh, but he wasn't the one who originally recorded it. See if you remember who originally recorded it. Hello, Walls. You remember Hello, Walls? Hello, Walls. It's great. So the uh, uh, the I'm premise sure. of you can't remember it really. I can't remember that. Hello, walls. I see you're still here today. Uh, you probably don't want to hang out with me, but she's left. And then, hello, window. <laughs> He's <laughs> talking to his apartment. Wow. Yeah. It really sounds like a, a Conway Twitty. It does, but it is actually fair and young of all people. Oh boy, fair and young. Yeah, buddy, you you're in deep. Yeah, it's so great. Well, listen, I highly recommend. Well, I'll try to. I'm going to link to it because it's a very well written but funny, simple song. 
So the premise is his ladies left him. He comes home to an empty house. And so he yeah. eats the various parts of the house. Um, like he says to the window, hello, Winda. And he says, Winda. He doesn't say right. window. He says, hello, Winda. Yeah. Hello, Winda. Yeah. Um, aren't you, don't you miss her since she's gone? Is that a teardrop, teardrop on your pain? Now, don't you go telling me that's rain. <laughs> wow. Fair and young. Yeah. Is the song called Hello Walls? Hello Walls. Hello Walls. Hello Walls. It's Hello. pretty wow. Now, <laughs> when you like to wallow in the sadness with a song like that, does it always have to be a little bit dumb? <laughs> I, wonder. You, I guess they're all any sad song is a little bit dumb. I have a real soft spot for a songwriter who sincerely writes something that it turns out is a little dumb anyway. I don't know. I love, I, there's something I love about it. Like uh, in a different genre, I like Paradise by the Dashboard Lights. Oh, sure. That was a dumb as hell song, but it's it's long and fat and there's too much of it. Yep. It's like three songs. Yeah. It is like buying a cheesecake, eating a slice of the cheesecake, and then going, nah, I'm going to fucking eat the whole thing. It is too <laughs> much song. And yeah. wonderfully so. And it has all the funny things. Like, it has a turn. Hello Walls, yeah. the whole song is just like, it, there's even, there's no turn in it. He's just talking to his house. <laughs> I love these. They were very good in those old country songs that just having a premise and then playing it all the way through. Oh, yeah. I'm going to talk to all the parts of my apartment. Yeah. Ask about uh, the girl. And there's, I think these four notes should be good. Yeah, plenty. <laughs> It's, um, really, it's, it's like all those and it's like he stopped loving her all those songs are like three minutes maybe yeah and half of them they're like ah, I'm going to stop singing and talk for a while <laughs> I don't know what to sing for three whole minutes yeah he stopped loving her today that's a really good song it oh really man is. that's funny I just went on this whole jag and I had I remembered oh um, hello walls and it, it took a while to remember it and then Mary Jo was frustrated. She's like, I feel like I should get my own place. Just she was joking-ish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she would enjoy having her own place. Yeah, she'll be back any minute. Yeah. And then I was like, what? I was like, oh, Hello Walls. That was the song. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Thanks, sweetheart. Hey, where, where, where'd you, where'd you, oh. Hmm. Uh oh, that's great. Buddy. <laughs> Hello Walls and three dogs and three cats. Uh, <laughs> oh fuck! I would be better if we were just the walls and the wind of pain. She's uh, gonna come back. Yeah. And by Figure the way, window is the best way to say window. It is. We fucked up. Yeah. We went the wrong way. That's all you need. You like... What happened? Uh, I think I've told you. I'll tell you my favorite. Uh, well written and sincere. Tear tearjerker song is uh by Loudon Wainwright and it's called Thanksgiving. You it's about talk. going home for Thanksgiving as a full grown adult and going through all the motions and how it just doesn't work and everybody hates each other. It's delightful. Man, I uh Thanksgiving I get to pull out the joke. I think I've told you the joke that I enjoy. I do it in conversation. I've done it on stage. It's my favorite Thanksgiving joke. I which I always say to somebody new that doesn't know me well enough and I forget that they don't know who I am. And I will say um I used to when I was a kid and didn't like Thanksgiving. It was hard to get along with the family. It's great now. We've all made peace. Really helped out when mom and dad died. <laughs> man oh great and i'm not wrong yeah no i get it yep are you going home to see ma 
Not for Thanksgiving, no. For Christmas. Christmas, I gotta. Okay. Sue's coming with me, and we're going to stay in a hotel. Smart. We haven't told her yet. And it's going to be a thing. You know, it would be great if she would go, yeah, but I don't want to stay in a hotel with you guys. <laughs> it's <laughs> That's pretty close to what might happen. Is uh, Thanksgiving with uh, Sue's family? Yeah, we're going to drive down to the Carolinas and see some nieces and little kids. That's great. Like that. Maybe hit some golf balls while we're down there. Having some kids around helps if you've got to deal with family because you can watch them enjoy things with fresh eyes and it kind of cleans things up, up for you a little bit. Yeah, you kind of forget with your own family once you grow up. It's like, oh, this stuff is all for kids. Yeah. Like, you know, most of us shouldn't be eating all the shit you eat at Thanksgiving anyway. Yeah. Only a kid's body can handle this. Yeah. And they're the only ones who like care about like the wishbone and who's carving the turkey and all this. Yeah. I'm like, what are we doing? We're like doing a dress rehearsal with no kids. And then we'll bring the kids in later, except you don't bring. You just... Yeah. The idea that I have to wrap a present as a 57 year old man and give it to my 85 year old mother so she can unwrap it is insane. Yeah. Just. Here's a check. Yeah, and I know this is a macabre thought, but it just popped into my mind because your your lovely mother is 85. Yeah. So any gift you give her is likely to be a thing you not too far from now is you box up into a bigger box with stuff. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Which crosses your mind during the shopping process. I'm like, all right, what do I want in three years? Yeah. <laughs> Or what do I want to not have to figure out what to do with? A buddy of mine is 70 and he just got his hip replaced. And his doctor said to him, this will last at least 30 years, which is all you're really going to need. And the way he said it was just so like, <laughs> all right, well. Who are we kidding? Yeah. My lovely wife just brought me some tea. Look at that. Thank you, Mary Jo. Hello, Walls. Hello, walls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, that's oh, crazy. So I want to ask you one political thing. All right. Well, what, what a gift was this week of fist fights. And... It's been very helpful. What a Nikki Haley, too. That lunatic. She's a lunatic, right? Yeah, she's the worst kind where you can't quite tell real easily. Yeah, uh, she, she comes across as if you didn't know English and you just heard her talking. Yeah, think, like, oh, she's good management. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, the all the fighting stuff was great. And, you know, back in the old days when I got into this business, that's what political comedy was. <laughs> it was like everything was kind of humming along fairly smoothly. And then someone would have a gaffe yeah. or an idea, and everyone would agree it was a dumb idea, which has also changed. Um, and then you'd make fun of that. You know, I talk to Seth about this all the time. We had a spell, I think it was, yeah, when I was doing Update, where, uh, remember Bernard Carrick? He was the police commissioner here in New York City, and he had a little corruption scandal or he had taken some money and he had a girlfriend that he like rented an apartment for her or something. And it all came out and it was the top story for like three months. That's how normal everything else was. Wow. Yeah. And we would complain because we're like, I don't have any new angle on this Bernard Carrick story, but it won't go away. And now just like, fist fights in the senate and then that'll not be the top story tomorrow something else crazy will go down well um, it will also be while it lasts it's a gift and fist fight and not only that but like him never thinking he did anything wrong <laughs> oh no doubling and tripling down that's a new phenomenon yeah there's never a moment of 
Well, you know, it really is true. There's only one functioning party in the country at the moment. Yeah. Yep. And that ain't good. No, it's not ideal. Yeah. <laughs> really, you want six or eight. Yeah. Yeah. Please uh, do. Really, really good ones. Yeah. Uh, so what, what song did we pick today? Rosalind? Yeah. Is it Rosalind or Rosalind? Rosalind. Rosalind. Rosalind is his mother's actual name. Okay, so it's probably Rosalind because that otherwise it's too close. Yeah. Also, Rosalind it doesn't sound great when you sing it. Yeah. And we 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 found it funny last time we talked about how just odd it is that there's two songs. There's we last time we talked about Rosalind's eyes, and now this right. is beautiful, great song. This is just Rosalinda, and we're like, how the hell do these both exist? Just weird. But I think it's because I believe this was unreleased originally. Yes. And I have to confess that for the longest time when you brought up this song, I thought you were talking about Roberta, another lady name song starting with an R. I bet you that Roberta from that song and Rosalinda from this song play bridge. Oh, probably yeah, maybe now. Yeah, on, on like Wednesday, they get together and play bridge. That's nice. Finger sandwiches, the whole thing? Oh, yeah, they do the whole thing. And I'll be honest, they have a couple drinks. Oh, girls. Not too many, but they do have a little bit to drink. They just want to have fun. Well, they're in walking distance from each other anyway. They talk about gardening. Yeah. Well, Roberta, from that song, you might remember as a hooker. Oh. Back in the day. I'm but, sorry. you know, people change. Yeah, exactly. Oh, right. play bridge. They got stories, too. <laughs> right? And they definitely drink. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. This song, I will say this. This song is undercooked as far as what it is. Yeah. In not a bad way, the piano playing is, it almost feels like he didn't have an idea for a tune. He just started playing the piano. <laughs> It's really just plinking along. Yeah, it's classical, kind of, right? You think it's, like, abandoned? Like, he didn't really finish it? I think and it's just like, well, I'll, this is like some version of a demo tape. I Yeah. The, so the version I listened to, which I think is from the album, was live, because the it, which is how you know it's unreleased, because the only version that exists is a live version somewhere. <laughs> or a garbage version on a cassette tape in yeah. his garage where he was trying to make us. But here's what it sounds like to me. So you know how like a lot of songs like, I think, um, is it Uptown Girl? Uh, he played it one in an interview once he played it. He said it's really a minuet and he plays it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he he did he's done that with a number of songs where he took a classical piece or something else and yep. then gives it a rock swing or whatever. Yes. This feels like he was singing to a classical piece and went, eh, good enough. <laughs> I'm changing a pre it. A pre-existing classical piece. Or like some I don't, you know, that's such a great aspect of the way he makes songs. Yeah. Because he was the quintessential like Long Island kid who took piano lessons. And had to learn all those pieces inside and out. And like, that's how we learned how pianos work. Yeah. And how songs work. And he was just like, I'll just use this stuff. Yeah. And you're allowed. There's no copyright. Allowed. And that's, <laughs> yeah, very thrifty. Yeah. And also such a great rock and roll thing where you just every, sweep everything into the bucket. It's all yeah. legal for use in rock. Yeah. This uh, also feels this feels like he's accidentally doing something Paul McCartney did, which is be super fucking lazy. Barely a song. <laughs> Barely a song. It's it's very much reminds me of Paul McCartney later work where he goes, I'm ah, Paul McCartney. There you go. Here's a song. <laughs> right. Isn't it good enough that it's me? Yeah, there's at least going to be one or two lyrics that you're like, oh, that's clever. But then most of the time you're going to go, oh, you you wanted to get to lunch. 
What uh, I'm curious uh, your thoughts on the the new Beatles song. I'm uh, torn. It's yeah. it's overproduced, but it had to be right to I finish mean, it. AI involved. It's going to be overproduced. And I because, heard. Go ahead. The the one thing that that my first thought when I heard it was kind of this joy from deep inside that said, oh my God, it's the Beatles. <laughs> and then that was about as far as it went. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, the Beatles. Great. Yeah. Part and of the then, it's overproduced yeah. beyond just rescuing the song from a dirty old cassette tape. Yeah. Is to make it a Beatles song, everybody has to contribute, right? So you've got to have a, Ringo's got to do a thing, play the drums. Paul McCartney's got to at, contribute something. And now you've now got to pull something from George. Whereas, of course, in the organic, the way it could have happened on a Beatles album, it could have literally just been John in, if it was originally the Beatles, because some of their songs, they weren't all doing stuff. Right. But in order to call it a Beatles song, or at least for it to feel like this is kind of a Beatles song, everybody has to do something, but that's not always a plus. No. Like Yesterday is a song that wouldn't have benefited from going, well, now we got to have George do something. Well, no, this is that's not this song. <laughs> yeah. there. I, they all have to contribute, but they can't all contribute equally. Right. That never made a great one. Um. It was always like, oh, it's 80% John. And then 20% everybody else. Then you had something great usually. Yeah. But I, this one felt or sounded like, oh, this is 25, 25, 25, 25. Yeah. And it's not the right formula. But I'm glad it exists. I don't, well, I certainly don't mind that it exists. I'll say that. I don't know if I'm glad. But it was fine to listen to. And there are some people who are just like, it's a great song. And I think those lovely people are just so happy it's there. And they're so at peace with that. That's the only thing they're going to get. Yep. That, they're very in touch. That first feeling that I had when I heard it, they're very in touch with that, I think. Like, oh, they're the Beatles. Like, I loved all of the, the I loved the last three Star Wars movies. I love yeah. them. Yeah. I know they're not very good. <laughs> right. But I also know, well, those are the only ones I'm going to get. Those are the only ones. Carrie Fisher is only going to be in those. Mark Hamill's only going to be in those. Harrison Ford didn't even want to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it okay. shows. I chose to like it because what, a, what good does it do me to not like it? Yeah. It's not a regular movie and this is not a regular song. It's true. If you want this because it represents a thing, then you take it for what it is. The rules are different because it's a very special case. Yeah. Yep. And All right. The, support that. Yeah. The, you know, the only thing that is just to hear John's semi young voice alongside old man Paul McCartney's weird and you <laughs> Yeah. Because, but then, and then that makes you sad because you're like, man, I should be able to hear seventy year old John. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, that was the age he was looking forward to because he liked getting older. Yeah, he was prepping for it nicely. Yeah, he. You know, I remember one of my favorite quotes is he goes like, "I know when I get old, I'm going to be happier, but I know there's going to be a lot of stuff I did now that I'm going to feel bad about." And he was self aware enough to know. Yeah, I'm going to regret some of the ways I was. And I love, I wish he could have lived to have that regret. Yeah, would have been some good music, probably. Yeah, and regrets are underrated. underrated. Yeah, they're oh, great. yeah. It's, you, it's something you get to sit with and keep. Yeah. All yours. Yeah. Share them if you want. Keep them if you don't. But uh, there's nowhere to put them. Yeah. You get them forever. Yeah. What kind of life did you live if you had no regrets? Yeah. It's a dumb one. It's hard. I I feel like it's physically impossible. Yeah. Oh, I always thought that that Frank Sinatra 
uh, song was is dumb because I'm like, Frank Sinatra had a ton of regrets. Really good, juicy ones. Wonderful regrets. Oh, God. Yeah. Haunted. You should be haunted. <laughs> if you ain't haunted, <laughs> you're not doing it right. Yeah, I do like that towards the end, he was just like, ah, I'm waiting to die because all his friends were gone and he was just, just like, no, oh, this is enough. <laughs> That's a good way to look at life. All right, this is Rosalinda. It's a very classical. I like the music in as much as it's great piano playing. Yep. But it sounds like a dude playing piano at the party who's just like, hey, let me show you that I can play piano. <laughs> yeah. And, and the singing. Eh. Not great. Not great. A little high, right? A little high. How when did he do this? 71, I think it said. Yeah, so really in the like reedy voice days. I yeah. wonder if it was also mastered the same way that uh Cold Spring Harbor was, it, where it was sped up a little bit. It probably was because also it was a live recording, right? So it's an in-the-room recording, it's not gonna be necessarily the best quality anyway to start with yeah and i like live recordings of songs that i've heard properly recorded where you go oh that's nice but this is the only so i don't know what this would sound like properly recorded <laughs> right right there's no control sample yeah i think what it would sound like is a waste of time <laughs> uh and he misses a trick and I'll, I'll let me start and tell you what the trick is. I bet you'll agree with me. So let me start with the lyrics. The first lyric is, oh, Rosalinda, why do you cry? He should have done the crazy fun voice. I really wanted, why you cry? He should have done that. <laughs> that's your yeah, thing, I man. Did know, I did know that you were going to say that. You didn't? <laughs> did. I did. You're good. Why you cry? He doesn't do it in the song, and I imagined he would. <laughs> he would now in concert, 100%. Yeah, I think he'd have somebody take over the piano so he could do this. Why you cry with the hands? Why you cry? <laughs> oh, Rosalinda, why do you cry? Oh, Rosalinda, could this be why? <laughs> <laughs> now that there's nothing left to do, now that the children have all grown, now all you have is just a cat and a silent telephone. Well, listen, I kind of do like the lyric because it's pretty mean. <laughs> I do actually kind of like that. The cat. Huh? Is it mean to bring up the cat? It's such a just snide thing to say. All you got is your stupid cat, your phone. Yeah. I like silent telephone. Yeah. That's nice. I don't feel like I've heard that phrasing. Yeah. Yeah. But, See, uh, I, ly lyrically, I like it. I like the first thing. It's almost like uh, lyric poetry, like a William Carlos Williams or some like very spare. Yeah. Poetry. Like, I would give you like two images and you'll understand this whole person. Yeah. And you yeah. do. You can you pretty play. much do. And you you do kind of imagine, I immediately think, even not knowing Billy Joel, I would just immediately go, ah, this is somebody's terrible mom. You're alone. Yep. These kids are clearly not calling you, and, and you were a nuisance. Yep. And you're crying now, oh, well, maybe you should have been different before. Yeah. I That's a text I almost send every night, and then I don't. <laughs> oh are you lonely oh you don't have any friends how come what is because of everything you are yeah but i don't i say uh eh, looking forward to christmas that's what i say <laughs> well you're good to say that well and then i get another kidney stone yeah yeah but you know i will say that you don't want the other feelings if you had said it and then later on. And like you said, 85, now's not the time. No. Nope. You had 
to do it like in the 60s mm -hmm. and after a certain age you gotta just like well all right this is mine until and unless yeah and or you piss me off one more time <laughs> Yeah, because what good could come of it? You're doing your best to be a good son. You do your part. And being a good son doesn't mean you have to enjoy the process of being a good son. It just means you're doing, you're, yes. you're meeting an obligation. And sometimes being a good son means you shut up. Yeah. In fact, more and more, it means that and it's, also, it's the same <laughs> as being a good employee. <laughs> yeah. And you shutting up is also a gift to yourself. Yes. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> and, you know, when there are two people in a relationship and only one of them is even capable of shutting up, now it's really on you. Yeah. <laughs> As if the, any shutting up is going to happen, as I have to take the shut, shutting up reins. <laughs> oh, it's oh Rosalinda, why do you weep? Oh, Rosalinda. Alone you sleep, no, but the neighbors turn away. What will it take for them to learn that all you want is to love and to be loved in return? Boo! Boo, super boo to alone you sleep. Yeah. You, buddy, first of all, there's got to be a, a rhyme that's less tortured. Yep. Um, the, I mean, the word you're trying to rhyme is weep. You have a lot of choices. Yeah. And maybe subconsciously, a piece of this lyric is cribbed from a much better song. There was a boy. Da, 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 da. The greatest love you'll ever learn is to be loved and to love and be loved in return. That's uh -huh. the exact, that right there. And I guarantee this underwritten song, like you'd look at it, if you bothered to write it again, you'd go, oh yeah. <laughs> Let me just clean that up. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't write that lyric that way. Well, what know. is uh, the song that the line is taken from? What is the other song called? There was a boy, the most enchanted boy, though he tried very hard, very hard. God, I don't remember. I just wonder if it's like, if it could be a reference for his mother, like a song that she liked or something. Oh, let me see if I can find the name of the song. There was a boy, a very strange, oh wow, it popped up. Nature Boy. Nature Boy. Wild. By Knacking Cole. Okay. Very possible then. Yeah. The version I'm familiar with is um now I'm blanking on the person's name. It was um the <laughs> the the thin duke. What's his name? Ellington? No, the thin white duke, or what is it called? Um uh China Girl is his... What? He did China Girl. David Bowie? David Bowie. <laughs> yeah, he does. Did you call him the Thin Duke? Yeah, or something like that. Or I made that up and he's never been called that. <laughs> if he hasn't, he certainly should be. Well, he is now. I think he was called that. The tracks. Yeah. Also, sometimes called David Bowie. So we'll just go. Some... <laughs> right, <laughs> no. Oh, Rosalinda. We are <laughs> away. Oh, Rosalinda. Still, you stay. <laughs> uh -huh. Being what you've always been and doing what you've always done, how can we give you back the time you gave us when you were young? Well, that's uh, well, the closest thing to a nice sentiment. It's all over the damn place. That's annoying. It's yeah. like it's number the first verse has a thought, the second verse is a different thought, 
this is a different thought. And it's not like an expanding story. It's more like, here's a different thing I think about this person, but incongruous things. Uh, yeah, unrelated to the other things. It's, again, it's reminding me of that uh, lyric poetry style where you just, I'm just going to say hey, what this is without a judgment and the reader will fill in, will like make their own story. Yeah. Or have their own feelings about it. I, do, I bet this so happens to you sometimes. I bet this happens to you sometimes when you write, because it definitely happens to me, because it feels like what happened is he had a good idea for the first verse, because I like the first verse. Yeah. And he's like, ooh, I got something, but then couldn't think about what to do next. Buddy, I have been, I started a couple of years ago trying to write like humor pieces for like the New Yorker and McSweeney's and stuff like that. And man, I've been plagued with that. We're like, oh, I got a great idea. And uh, I'll have like a great first paragraph or example. And then the second one is a little off the topic or not quite the same joke. And by the end of it, you've written like five of these. And you're like, I don't remember what I was trying to do. Yeah. This isn't cohesive. I want it to be, I want it to like have the same feeling all the way through. And then it just like, falls apart yeah it's it's infuriating nuts. it's infuriating yeah one years ago i was writing something we're doing a little sketch comedy show and it was a fun show and i wrote this one sketch and it was the per the perfect edit was literally they whoever was pointed this out was like hey let's just take off the last three pages and it, it <laughs> literally fixed it without changing the word it was just let's right. just stop here but you will drive yourself up a wall before you figure that out. Yeah. Or it's certainly possible to. I know I did. Yeah. Yeah, This is, it's very weird how nice, because I read that first lyric, and I was like, this is a good lyric. And man, it goes to hell after that. It really does. And then it goes... I mean, I feel like three out of the four verses are one song. Or one narrative feeling. Yeah. Oh, Rosalinda, turn out the light. Oh, Rosalinda, say good night. Now that all the children have all grown, now that we've all gone away, now that you're sitting at home without a word to say. I don't mind that. That one's at least as mean as the first one. Yes, at least as mean. Um, it it also is the same as the first one. <laughs> it's just describing, yeah. hey, you're alone. We've all gone away, and uh, nothing's going on in your life. Yeah, no, no word about what's going on in his life, or, or no comparison. Like, how are the other moms doing? Right. It's just That's a real. Like, ha ha! You're alone. Yeah. You know what would make this song good, honestly, is like keep the first one the same, the last one the same. If yep. the other two were about who she blames for her circumstance. Sure. This, you know, a lot of his songs kind of are like this, except that they will have a bridge in the middle that will give you more information and tell you how to feel about the rest of the it will inform everything else. Yeah. There would be like a bridge that's like, hey, you used to hit us and now you're, alone. And you're like, oh, okay. Now I know how to hear the other stuff. Yeah. You talked at us like that's whatever the thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This is not a good song. It's just not good. Just not a good song. And, you know, kudos to him for not putting it on an album. Yeah. Whoever made that decision. It has a proper ending. Yeah. But by the time you get to it, how grateful are you? Yeah. The other thing uh, is, 
it Not really just is an unfinished song. So the fact that it's released on something was just because it was in a vault somewhere and somebody decided. Yeah. There has to be, I feel like, with these vault programs, <laughs> there has, still has to be a sorting process, I think. Like, you can't just because he sang it. Yeah. Like, I think you have to be like, oh, this was close. Or this could have been on one of the albums. Or yeah. is, oh, here's a secret hit. Not just like, it's embarrassing. <laughs> Yeah, like it's... I've definitely written a lot of stuff that has not seen the light of day, and I certainly don't want anybody to publish it after I die. Yeah, or certain, especially before. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm in any danger of any of that happening. But to think about the stuff I half wrote and put away, yeah, showing up, it'll be like, oh no, no, no. Yeah, I it's garbage. Or stuff you wrote from a place of unintentional ignorance where you were like, I I learned something since I wrote that and now I'm pretty sure that's just racist or whatever. The thing yeah. Like yep. Thinking of something I wrote. <laughs> oh, but nobody's ever seen it. Huh? Anything I wrote 20 years ago, I don't want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> regrets yeah. i've had a bunch yeah i i know i'm always delighted when i see something older that i've done if it's say a set i did somewhere and i go oh damn that's really funny because then i it's that feeling doesn't happen often enough because you see older stuff you just don't feel that way sure and i feel like because i i don't know if you have this experience but like if i see something i did 10 years ago a video or whatever and it's like i'm watching a different person i get yeah. i can be real objective about that and so if i like it i'm like oh man that's nice i really am glad that was that it happens once in a great while when someone i've been working with for a long time will say like hey remember the joke you wrote and they'll say the joke and i'll be like no memory of it but that's that's a pretty good joke. Yeah, that makes you feel good. Oh, I like that. Nice. Yeah. Wish I guess I wish I remembered writing it, but how could you? Yeah. Here's a joke I wrote this week, and then I got bummed out. It's just a dumb joke. Um, my chili <laughs> is famous, but for all the wrong reasons. That was the joke. Yeah. And then I wrote, I thought, should I have just said my chili is infamous? Should I have just said that? You know, I you tweeted that. Yeah. And I saw it and I thought, oh, that's weird that he didn't just say infamous. Really? All right. Yeah. That's I had that thought. And I was like, all right. Okay. Yeah. The choice. I would say they're two different jokes. Well, like yeah. it's my joke would be you can imagine it's part of a conversation where somebody goes, My chili is my world, my world famous chili, and then I were to say, "Well, my chili's famous, but for all the wrong reasons." Yeah, and then just go real quiet. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. maybe you see a newspaper clipping that says, "You know, man's chili kills five or something." <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, great. I think that's funny. You had the same thought because it just popped in my mind. I'm like, why did I say infamous? Yeah, I am, you know, it's a occupational nuisance to whenever you see a joke. And they're like, oh, what would I do here? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll patch this up. Well, yeah, because that's part of your job anyway, is you write your own jokes, but also you rewrite your kids' jokes, right? The folks yep. Are, yeah. Oh, my God. And every time it's the same. Um, I got to take out a bunch of words. I'm like, that's a good joke. There's just too many words in it. Yeah. It doesn't matter if the car is green. Just to, we just need car. What are you doing? <laughs> Why? People have been here for 10 years and you're still overwriting everything. Oh, that's so, it's so frustrating how many times you'll rewrite a joke and go almost always the same same issue. Yeah. It's you said it backwards. Yep. Okay. The funny part too early. Yep. Too many words after the punch word. 
at least people are getting at least uh, probably at this stage people are past the thing that you'll see in new comics where you're like hmm, I, I wonder if they know that all they've said is a premise <laughs> yeah hey you made the observation but yeah. uh you didn't phrase it as a joke yeah they're some such and such and such is weird you're like I'm with you, but yeah, you gotta surprise me. That by itself is, uh, believe nothing is what that is. Yeah, like you're just writing an essay. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the name of the comic. There's a comic in LA who I love who Ron, I don't know, but he's got this joke where he'll just get on stage and goes, Have you guys ever, ever, uh, ever, ever, uh, you guys ever? <laughs> I like that. That dude's good times. Oh Lord, what was that? Oh, so uh, <laughs> I want to show you this picture. All right. Oh boy. Okay, hold on. I got to look at it more closely. And now that there's a verbal part of the clue, pro probably because oh. I think all by itself, I'd be really amazed if you got it. I can't even tell which band that is. Yeah, which is semi-intentional because then it's too obvious. But oh, I, okay. I, will, I will tell you this about myself. Every now and then, I'll go see him. I mean, just every now and then I will. I'm known for that. Uh-huh. Yep, I'll just, I'll just go. All right. Uh, you go, uh, to, go to a concert. Yep, I go to a concert, but I go to this, see this band. Is it Sgt. Peppers? <laughs> <laughs> yep, every now and then I go, I go to I go to this this band. Oh, a horrible thing has happened, which is that uh Bonnie Turner song is stuck in my head now. Which is it Bonnie song? Turner? Is that Bonnie right? Tyler? Every, every yeah, every now and then I fall apart. Bonnie Tyler, yeah. Yeah. She's great. Right. She's a weird one because she had one career. She got nodes, which should have ruined her voice. But yep. then the second part of her career was even better because it gave her that husky, sexy, ridiculously cool voice. Yep. How does that happen? That's amazing. That That's song great. turned Medical around. Action. Crazy. So wonderful. But now every now and then I go to see this band. <laughs> And I'll say the sentence. I'll just say, yeah, I, I love to go. I can't tell who the band is. Yeah, but it's a wild <laughs> rocking band. Mm -hmm. They're a wild band. Yeah. Uh... Oh, there's the, the dumbest name for a band, too. But, like, it's so on the nose as a band. Is it the band? Huh? <laughs> is it the band? Oh, I love the band. That's one of my favorite dumb jokes. You know the name of this band? I love that joke. But and kids today go, no, I don't, old man. Uh, <laughs> no, this is this is a this is a. If you called your band this, you guys, you're like you guys. Are huh? You're not. You're not all that crazy. Is it a long-haired band? Kind of, yeah. The 80s, 90s. And another long-haired band. And they had a big hit. And know, the that doesn't help. But sometimes I go to see them. <laughs> sometimes. Occasionally. I go to... See this band? Whatever the band is that I can't identify. But the I I'm giving you the phrase, I go to... <laughs> is this band called Extreme? Yeah, sometimes I go to Extreme. Oh, dude. How dumb is that, right? You're an idiot. Right? Yes. <laughs> Hello, Walls. Hello, Walls. I remember when I used to do a podcast with Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you thought, did some part of your brain think that I would recognize that as extreme? 
I just found it so funny to get a picture of the band because that just seemed like such a dumb clue and I didn't care. I just found it so amusing. Oh, all right. You didn't think it through that much. Well, That's so I, I, if I got, this is the thing where my logic broke down because I could have gotten a publicity still. Uh huh. And you might have recognized it because it, they're the band that their big hit was more than words is what, oh, that sure. horrible piece of crap. But then I was like, yeah, but that's not what they look like when you go to see them. True. So that's what they look like. That's what you, that's what it is when I go to extreme. <laughs> and then it amused me to imagine a guy who would go see this band more than once. Yeah. That I found funny too. So that in itself is going to an extreme. For those of you at home who don't do comedy, that's a curse of comedians all the time is the number of things we find funny that are funny because no one else could enjoy them. Right. They, uh, they're <laughs> funny because they're not funny. Yeah. That's a hard thing to explain to a civilian. Yeah. And they're right not to understand that. Oh, yeah. You don't need that. Your brain's okay. You can go be in the world and be normal and productive. We can't. No. So this is what we have to do. Yeah, the amount of nights when somebody will get up there just because they're fucking mad. They're like, I'm going to teach this audience a lesson for coming. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And you as another comedian, you are like, okay, I get it. Yep. The audience won't. In the back of the room, that's sometimes my favorite night, but... Oh, yeah. it's Sometimes it's the funniest thing you can see is somebody eat it. Yeah. Oh, God, yes. Eat it and then double down and get mad at the audience. Uh, that's, I don't want to see somebody have a good set. The other magic thing that I like, that this, I, I think this is only comedians would do this, is somebody's eating it they're at the end of their time, so they've done their time. Let's say they were supposed to do 15 minutes. Right. They run the light. They do extra time because they're like, I got to end on a laugh. And they're chasing a laugh that is not coming. Yep. Yep. And it's that thing of like, the, the desperation is so evident now that the, the laugh is getting further away. Yep. And nobody ever said, well, I don't like this, but maybe I'd like it if there was more. That's <laughs> no, yeah. Never no. do that with dinner. You'd never go, well, I don't really like this entree. Well, eh, maybe just one more helping, and then now it'll be good. Yep. Nope. Now I'm even madder at myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But every uh, now and then, I go to extreme. I go to extreme. I go to extreme. <laughs> Oh, that's delightful. Hello. Oh, so stupid. Hello, hello, Walls. So before you pick a song, do you have trivia for me? Um, when uh, Billy Joel had basically a, a failure with his first album, and then he went out to Los Angeles, you might remember, and played in a piano bar for a long time. Yeah. Um, he played in one piano bar out there. He didn't make the rounds. What is the name of the piano bar? Uh, the M bar? No. No, it's uh, I feel like I should know this. I know that I should know this. And it's a name that you'd go, oh, yeah. Because it's maybe. And yeah, what was it? It was the executive room. I wouldn't have known that. No, the executive room. I intentionally looked it up because I was like, oh, that'd be a good trivia question. And then when I read the answer, I was like, I did hear that. Yeah. I did somewhere in my brain kind of know that. Yeah, I feel like I did too, but I also feel like my brain's not going to hold on to much. So I give myself credit. <laughs> right. Speaking of that, um, in my search for a song we haven't done, I cannot remember what we have done. I, yeah. I now look at all the tracks that exist and some part of my brain is like maybe we did that I can't remember we're very close 
of VR. It's when you're getting into Rosalinda. Right. When you've done the other Rosalinda. Listen, we're my next we episode. Roberta. Yeah. Huh? We did do Roberta? Yeah. We did. Yeah. I'm very close to doing a bottle episode where we just talk about when he sang that song as a dog, which he didn't write. <laughs> uh, and Oliver and Co. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got that in my back pocket when I'm like, I don't know. Well, how about that one? Where and that's fine. I can justify that. Yeah, I, I think I might have to break song. Out. Huh? I'm gonna have to break out a, a 45 B side that did not appear on an album. Fantastic. And I'm gonna have to Google the title. How about that? I love this. We're going deep cuts, baby. And it also might be a cover. Does that <laughs> count? Can we do that? Yes, I think we can. The, we're at, we're looking at it from a different point of view. That's all. That's fair enough. I would then now, say Mitch. that's kind of a bottle <laughs> episode in the, in a sense. Yeah. Hold on, we're just googling. The song is called. Yeah, I think it is a cover, but it is called "House of Blue Light." Well, that's definitely a cover. But I'd love to talk about his version of it, and then we'll talk about the lyrics of as well. I think it's some of his, some of his best singing. What some of his best singing? Nice. Yeah, yeah he does. Um, Let's try that. I love it. You know, and that'll be episode ninety four. Uh, he does uh, live. We. I, Seen him, he did a few covery things like always at River of Dreams is the middle part where he does a something else, yeah, which I think makes that song great live, yes, certainly the... better, huh? Certainly better, <laughs> yeah, Some thing needs all the help it can get. Oh, uh, hello, walls, hello, walls. Look up Hello Walls. It's a sad old dumb old song. It's great. It's not even dumb. It's a good song. It's just simple. It's the in the 60s, they were like three minutes is enough for any song. I kind of I want to check in with our producer right now. Okay. Hey Sue, you know a song called Hello Walls? Yeah. She knows. It was a big hit. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. good walls. 